Hi, this is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle. I'm back again with some project previews on some things I picked up this past weekend uh, from the town garage sales. So our town holds a garage sale uh, in the fall and then the adjacent town homes holds one the next week. And of course, it's a great diversion and it's an opportunity for me to get out and see if I can find some things. Well, I did. So we're going to call this one a tackle bag and what came next. But I was out, uh, out and about and I um, was uh, looking around at a, uh, one of the uh, homes and they had a whole bunch of these bags, kind of funky, but uh, nonetheless had some tackle in it. Most of them were these little um, uh, teaser jigs with some blades on it. There's probably, I don't know, probably 15 or 20 of these things in different colors, some with the the wings and other things. They're popular along the uh, uh, the Atlantic Sea Coast here. We can use them for a variety of fish and they seem to attract. And then this one caught my mind. Actually, this is the first thing that caught my mind was there's a couple of thugs in here. And uh, the nut on this was um, they didn't want much and I didn't pay much. But I certainly got my money's worth. Here's uh, four of these. I think they might be the Rapalas. But uh, regardless, I got uh, four of these and I paid less than $10 for the, the whole segment. There were more of those. There were some jigs in there. There were some floaters, uh, poppers. And uh, overall, I think probably did okay. Here's a, a, a weighted plug. And uh, we'll put a lot of these to good use here in, in, uh, when I go fishing. Here's another bag that we had. I think these were soft baits. Um, some rigs, some tube rigs that we uh, we use around here. Some uh, replacement hooks for our, our metal jigs. Here's a metal metal jig uh, that we use, and uh, just a whole bunch of good stuff. I'm not even going to open up this stuff, but uh, again, a lot of rigs here that uh, have sharp hooks. They weren't rusted in any way or any regard, and uh, they're ready to go fishing. And uh, I don't normally buy terminal tackle. Uh, I have a couple of uh, boxes that are certainly stocked full of what I need. But when I see something like this, of course, you got to ask. And when you ask, you got to have an opportunity. And I said, okay, well, these are kind of the surf plugs I use. So let me see if I can get a good price on that. And the whole thing, like I said, wound up less than $10. But that's not what uh, this story is about. It's about what came next. I started having a conversation uh, with the seller. And I said, you know, uh, what's what's the story here? She said, well, we were um, just cleaning out the basement. They were they were all there, and uh, I guess her dad or whomever uh, was an avid fisherman, and nobody really took up the sport. And these things have been laying around, and they just wanted to pass them on to somebody who was going to use them. And uh, you can see they haven't been around in a while. These are the old steel hooks starting to get the rust on them, and that. So of course, I had to ask. Do you have any other fishing equipment, any rods and reels? And the answer was, yes, we do. But they're not out here because we didn't think we could sell them. Let me go get them for you. So this is what came next, another bag of reels. So the moral of this story is going to be, always ask that follow-up question. If you're looking for something at one of these yard sales or flea markets or whatever, uh, don't be afraid to, to ask them what else might you have that would interest me. Well, when they came back up, this one almost uh, knocked me out. This is a beautiful old Pen 60 Senator in wonderful condition. It was obviously taken care of. And uh, the rest of my conversation after this really didn't matter. The other reels were going to be fine. I didn't care. I was kind of sold at that point uh, for what they were asking for them. And the whole lot was uh, less than $100 uh, at the end of the day. But this one is uh, certainly a nice reel. I've done 6.0s uh, in my uh, video library. So that doesn't, I probably won't make it to uh, videoing again. But one 6.0. And then what we have is probably the reel that everybody's got accustomed to. This is uh, the 150 size Penn Beachmaster. Again, in, in nice condition. This one will clean up. This is the 150. I think the one that was most popular in the in the series was the 155. It was a little bit lighter, uh, or I'm sorry, longer in the uh, in the frame. 
but uh, certainly a good reel all around. This is the first reel I bought my daughter when she decided she was going to take up fishing. So uh, a little bit of a memory there. Two beasts. You can't beat this reel in my mind. Uh, I have two 50H Daiwa reels, and uh, these are sea line reels. Um, one of the early series. I think these are about 30 years old now. You couldn't tell it from the spin on this one. It's probably been sitting in her basement for, I don't know, let's guess five years or more. But this thing, the bearings on it are still smooth. The operation is, is really nice. The only thing that's wrong, of course, is you've got all the line on there. So I said two. Yep, that was one. Here's two. And you can generally tell if you're shopping for a sea line reel or the like. The, the amount of usage is usually determined by how well these badges stick on because this is the uh, business end of the reel. You're going to be bringing up fish all the time. That These are not level one reels, so that line, if I can get it untangled here, probably can't. But it's going to scrape against this typically as it's coming up, as you're landing fish. It'll generally scrape on this. And if you find that these are worn off, generally is a good indication of uh, just how heavily or how lightly these reels were used. So we got uh, two two sea lines. Next up, I just did one of these. This is a Black Max. This one's the uh, 6600. And I'm guessing that what we got here is uh, just backed off the drags, which is what you should do. And you can start to see now, we got a little bit of mold or, or old at a minimum uh, on the rubber handles just from uh, sitting there for a while. I like this one a lot. And uh, I just had a fellow ask me about a narrow frame ambassador. So uh, I think that's probably uh, going to be his. Uh, we'll see. And we got another uh, Max. Yep, got another one of these. So there's a pair of these. This one is the uh, looks like 6600 wide. I guess they're both the same. Maybe I read it wrong. Yeah, a wide, I guess, I wear off of this. No, it is. It's got a little bit more spool capacity there. But again, other than uh, what wide uh, or too much line on a reel or old old line on a reel, these things will be restored easily. Not done yet. This is one of the reels that's the standard of the Northeastern Seaboard. This is a Penn Jigmaster. This is the Penn Jigmaster 500. This is an older one. It's got the burgundy side plates to it. Again, the, uh, the chrome on this one says it hasn't been used much. And judging from the uh, collection of reels here and what the individual was uh, uh, accumulating here, I'd say he did mostly saltwater fishing and he had a little bit of a reel for inshore and outshore jigging, casting, and heavy fish. Here's why you don't leave the line on the reel. You can see that uh, at some point the saltwater that was on the line leached onto the spool and uh, eventually it will corrode the, uh, the spool. A lot of folks say, what do you do, or ask the question, what do you do after each trip? Well, you should flush this out with um, fresh water at a minimum. I like to take these and put them, take them off my rod and put them in a bucket of fresh water or let them sit overnight. That generally will dilute any of the salt content that's in there. And certainly, I, I always say, take the line off after the season for sure. And then if uh, there's cosmetic things on the side in that... Uh, there is a product out there, Pen makes it, it's called the Pen Rod and Reel Cleaner. It works for more than just pen reels, but that does help keep the junk off the side plates. In this case, these uh, side plates are nice. This reel uh, from the age was made in the United States. It's one of the best reels, in my opinion, ever made for a ver variety of fishing. And then there was one more, of course. So uh, this one is an older ambassador. This one is the... Uh, can't tell the badges off, probably to 5,500. Uh, we've got the line tied up here. I have no reason to believe uh, that it doesn't work. It does. And I just recently did an ambassador, so I probably won't do another one of these. Uh, but I will restore this one and give this one a second chance. Looks like we have a little issue here with the uh, catch button. I just got a question in front of my... Uh, comment section about uh, somebody who had a problem with the, the button not sticking. So maybe uh, maybe I'll use that as an example of that. So 
Uh, there you go. So I started out buying a whole bunch of terminal tackle that I don't normally buy just because I saw a couple of surf plugs in there. And it turned into, well, what else do you have? Or do you have anything else, rods and reels? And that turned into a conversation about why they were selling this stuff to begin with. And the purchase of some very nice saltwater reels that I wouldn't be afraid to take any one of these fishing. In fact, I do fish the 50H and I do fish the, uh, the Abus and the like. So um, I'm going to clean them up, take care of them, and uh, get these out there fishing again. Uh, come spring. We're pretty much done now with most of this. This line uh, is overloaded on the spool. Interesting. All right. So if you're a first responder, if you're a uh, emergency personnel, essential personnel, healthcare worker, teacher, uh, medical professional, thank you for all of this that you're doing during the pandemic. If, uh, if we're not, we should be doing what we can to stay safe, stay out of harm's way, wear the masks, do the social distancing and the like. Not preaching at you, it just makes a lot of good sense to, to go ahead and go do that. Uh, in the meantime, what I'll be doing is I'll be doing a lot of these reels. If there was one in there that you'd like to see a video on, please let me know. Uh, you can do that by way of the comments below. Uh, if you want to see these, the best way to see these is to subscribe. Uh, my, my channel can always use subscribers. That's what keeps it vibrant. And that way you don't miss whatever it is that I post. And I've been trying to post daily uh, during the pandemic. And then finally, if you have a reel that needs to be serviced or repaired, uh, you can contact me by email on the business card that follows, and I'll be happy to provide you with that surface information. So I hope you enjoyed the preview. I hope I gave you a couple of tips about asking what else they might have when you, uh, when you wind up at a, uh, a flea market, a garage sale, a yard sale, a boot sale, whatever we call them, wherever we are, a tag sale. Uh, but uh, regardless, you might just surprise yourself and find something uh, very interesting in the responses that you get. So this is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle. Thank you for watching. Have a great day.